Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. A few hours ago, um, when Mrs. Golden had her live stream, I jumped on uh, to explain um, my reasons for raising um, gender talking points in a golden sphere when I wanted to avoid the war. Um, the truth be told, and, and she said, I'm not casting judgment on a black mind because I like him. And the truth be told, I certainly appreciate that. But the real reason to not cast judgment on me is going to be more important than her liking me or disliking me. It works like that for me and for anyone else. I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, and it's okay for people who like me to say, hey, man, from where I'm standing, you're wrong. Because I may very well have been one of those that precipitated this. And this is something that is, it's kept me up at times. I mean, it's caused me to lose some sleep. And um, it's not the only thing that interferes with my sleep, but it's one of a few things that does. And I've seen the effects of it. One of the reasons I record these things now is because it helps. I'm trying to practice speaking without getting tongue tied. And I could do this in class, but it doesn't make a difference because my afternoon students are so bad and even in their own language, really, that if I got tongue tied, they would not know the difference. I don't speak to them. I have to use the chat. So you get about two hours a day from where my English is really important. And I've been tongue tied even in class before speaking. I know the language. I'm speaking my first language, but I still just get tongue tied. And then there are things I forget and I get impatient when people ask me, how could you forget this? Hell, hell, I don't know. I forgot. Damn. And it's due to lack of sleep. But my conscience does not keep me up because I feel like I was morally wrong. I don't feel that way. My conscience keeps me up for a slightly different reason. I feel like I was procedurally I was procedurally stupid sometimes, but then I also realized at other times, like right now, that there was no right way to go about this. There was not a right way to bring it up um, to avoid a gender war, because if I bring up um, the issues that are driving black men away from black women, and it ain't driving black women away from black men. If I bring up the issues that are driving black men away from black women, so that a sphere that is defecting from that dysfunctional gynocracy, that man repellent gynocracy, does not repeat the same errors. And then some get triggered, even though I'm not pointing the finger at them for the errors of those whom they, from whom they are defecting, then that means that they aren't really defecting. Now, gentlemen, I've said before again that I would address... Um, the ladies in the golden sphere under the three conditions. Of course, I don't mind leaning in and saying hello. Um, and if I had not been driving at the time uh, when I was hearing the live stream, I would have just simply typed um, in and said, my contributing to the gender war in the golden sphere, if I actually did it, was an honest mistake because my intention was the opposite. I could have simply said that, but I was driving. I couldn't um, type that. And it was risky enough for me to even jump on the live stream but by that point i was off of the public road so legally i could um i could probably get away with it i was i mean at that point i was actually on the campus of my job site and this week we go into work we're not um teaching from home now that being said um uh, to those who started especially to any ladies who started discussing gender in an aggressive fashion in response to anything I said. I am sorry if I misled you, but my intention was to prevent these things. When I went on to Exotical United's live stream with Carl Williams, he and I wanted to prevent the same patterns from happening again in a new sphere because it as I was saying women have the right to be repelled by whatever repels them and if they walk into a bar and every man is under five three and ladies walk right the f back out maybe it's rude but it's not necessarily wrong 
Well, you know what? There are things that can drive men away too. And I simply wanted women to understand not to make those and not to repeat those same errors. Gentlemen, I will say this to you. The ladies and we are in the same sphere for different reasons. That's fine as long as we realize what that difference is and we're still willing to cooperate. And as, as I have said, my reasons are moral and religious. It is about you and the ladies having a right to safety and it is about the kids having a right to safety. Psychologically and physically. You'll face enough dangers anyway without adding on to that the dangers of uh, from your own relatives who are paranoid that you're going to sell them out. So they want to beat you up first and the uh, uh, paranoia from your other relatives on another half of a family who think that um, you actually represent the end goal of the other, which is to wipe them out. Without you adding these trials to people's lives, people go through enough. So um, that's my it's, it is freedom from this and immunity uh, from this that I want for you. And that's my reason for this. People should love themselves and they should not be told not to. And the people who should not love themselves are low life rat bastard pieces of crap who have made nasty moral decisions that render them unworthy of love, even self love. When people don't make decisions like this, why should they not love themselves? You see, there are people who should not. There are people who I think need an extra beating just for loving themselves because something they did was so bad even before that point. So they should just get their behinds whooped. But most people aren't, aren't making decisions that are that bad. And so for this reason, I, yes, I brought up the topics. I meant them as a prevention to any who thought and therefore responded as though I meant them as a provocation. I'm terribly sorry. Me misleading you, if that's what I did, was an honest human error. That was not the intention. It was to prevent it. We're going to have to discuss the gender issues, but we can do it without bringing up, without starting another war. In the black community, that's over. That day has, has come and gone. You, you discuss it, she gets triggered. You start talking about, you're right, she gets triggered. And y'all got some ladies that are uh, slithering around in the grass amongst you all that want to start this stuff. But gentlemen, want us to understand. See, it is perfectly okay, gentlemen, that we don't have the same grudge against unmixed black men um, because we weren't as ill-treated in adulthood. That's okay. And it is okay if they have more of a grudge against unmixed sisters because of how ill-treated they've been in childhood and adulthood and because they do face more physical dangers when they get older from women who don't even know them. See, for us, for a guy to walk up to us, for all this talk about how we ain't tough, we know that when we get to our adult size, um, it, most dudes just ain't gonna walk up to us and start stuff with us. Chances are, if we're out and they're out there on their way somewhere, that's more important than taking a grudge out on us. The same thing with us. So they don't like us, they'll probably just leave us alone, not say nothing, and that's okay, all right, they, they don't like us, we don't like them, we're not gonna harm them, they won't harm us. We, we are more likely to come across that. And so it's okay that we don't have the same experience. I don't think a lot of sisters really want, uh, a lot of specifically golden sphere women want us to have those same experiences. They wanna not have them themselves. That's what they're looking for. But because we're now talking about an offline community with endogamy to sustain its population, we will have to discuss these things because frankly, we men have been mistaught as well. It's just that it's very easy for me to tell these, well, it's a bit easier and it really ain't that easy. It's a bit easy for me to tell these men what they need to know to untrain themselves than it is for me to tell these ladies. Even then it ain't that easy. If Mr. Dom Game Division from B More can do a live stream late at night on a Saturday night and get 1,200 uh, views, then I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. Why is it that when I put an upload, it doesn't get that many? I'm not saying that to complain. What I'm saying is that simply put, his message, which holds men accountable for things that are beyond our control, actually resonates with a larger, it resonates, I'm sorry. See, there I go getting tongue-tied. It resonates with a larger audience 
than my message does, which tells men take accountability, but only for that over which you had control and adequate knowledge to affect a better outcome and make a better choice. That's, um, that's my message. And what is it that we men have largely done that is wrong? We've made it too easy. There you go. That's what we did wrong. We made it too easy. We set up and we just made it entirely too easy for ladies. And they responded by making it very difficult for men. So the basics are very difficult for the majority of men. They're trained to do this. They're socialized to do this. They can do this with malice and anger, but they can also do this with no malice, no anger, not even hardly a thought because that's the default training. It's just like when, um, when fit held a gun when that guy was, when that guy kicked his door in, uh, although I think maybe his argument might've been valid when that man kicked his door in fit acted on training. He didn't have to think much about it. His mind may have been racing, but not about what to do next. Assalamu alaikum. Eish lunak. Alhamdulillah. Surat al tak marathaniya. So that's, uh, that's what training does. It allows you to complete a bunch of tasks and respond to certain stimuli in ways that don't really require you to think. And that's what both of us are doing. We are responding to stimuli um, of attractive ladies by trying to get their attention, going to them, approaching them, opening up uh, conversations with them. That's not always wrong in a default scenario. I mean, in my religion, you actually ask her, can you talk to her dad or, or an uncle or grandfather or something? Um, but I'm just saying that, that, that we generally respond by going to them. They respond to the stimuli according to how they're trained and how were they trained in the West where we live. What can I get out of this dude? And that's it. It's not even long term. It's just what can I get? And among these things, social approval from my friends. That's one of the things that tops it in the black community. And in, um, amongst white teenage girls, too, it's the same thing. So if I'm, I'm telling you these things, gentlemen, and I'm not even necessarily blaming the ones who do this without malice. But what I'm telling you, gentlemen, is that they're going to respond based on their training. And they would have to untrain themselves. And women in the golden sphere, they've at least heard the message. We have to sit up and have these discussions. If what they would like is an offline community, a population of which would be sustained by endogamy. If that's what they want and they have the right to want that, because many of them have actually been ill-treated by women that they didn't know and to whom they did nothing. And from whom they deserve no mistreatment. This actually has happened. And a lot of these times it has been based on assumptions that these other women made who reacted these ways to them. And the funny thing is, when if when these ladies actually get to sitting sitting down and talking, and they they talk with cool heads, and I'm talking about the ladies who don't like light skin uh, b words according to their own words. I'm not calling anybody names, and um, uh, and then the women that they don't like actually sit down and talk with cool heads, especially if they come to realize who they know in common. They usually don't wind up hating each other. I can remember when I was out with my daughter um, in uh, 2018. I'll never forget, in my hometown, I was out with both of them in 2018. We went to this local black-owned fried chicken restaurant. I was waiting in line to place the order. And uh, my little chunky cheeks, standing next to me, holding my hand, and she turned around and she looked at a, a lady in a security guard uniform, and she looked at her long, and I know the reason why. The lady in the security guard uniform, and my daughter was little, so she's going to stare. The lady in the security guard uniform resembled my daughter's maternal grandmother. That was why. Now, the lady spoke and said, oh, hey, baby, I see you over there. I know you don't want to stand next to me because of my color. I turned right around, look, and wait, me? Why wouldn't I? And that's when I when I saw her, I turned to see her, and that's when I realized why my daughter stared. And I said, "Oh, you mean my, you mean her?" And she said, "Yeah, I got a grand I got a grandbaby look just like her." And I said, "Well, ironically, her maternal grandmother looks just like you. I think that's why she was staring. If she was staring, that must have been why. Because uh, when when I see you, the spitting image. So no, she probably want she may have wanted to go over and stand next to you and hug you." 
Um, and in the car, my daughter asked me, why does she think that that's a reason for me to not stand there or to, to, to stand far away from her? I was in line with you. You see, and now the, the thing is that the conversation actually ended. It quickly turned pleasant, the conversation between the lady and me. Quickly turned pleasant. She wasn't hostile. She wasn't looking for a fight. She really thought this stuff in her old age. She thought this stuff. Now see, that's the type of conversation that the ladies are going to have to have. They probably can, maybe not. If they can't, then well, then there's nothing that we would be able to do about it. But if they're looking for something with us, then these are conversations we're going to have to have similarly. Not with the making of the, not with the assumptions, but we will have to still have these, actually, I shouldn't even say we because I'm not sure if, if I'm welcomed in on those discussions, but understand, gentlemen, you will still have to have them. You're going to, and, and you don't have to turn them into, debate, in, into debates and arguments with hatred. Of course, you should not. You just have to understand, you will have to have conversations. And ladies, they're gonna be, there is a lot more for you to learn from the men in terms of uh, uh, what mistakes not to make than there is for the men to learn from you. The men have a lot to learn from you in terms of what to know about women that you don't want men to know. Now, when you're going to sit up and say something that fits those criteria, these are the things that we need to fuck the shuck up and listen to hands down. Because there is really nothing else that has governed the interactions between men and women of any culture more than what women wish men knew but don't want to tell men. That's a paradox in and of itself. Now that's, and that's across culture, that's here too. Everywhere you go, it's the women that seem to have the mystery surrounding them. And the only mystery surrounding men is when the men are very highly successful and very nice to look at. Then they're seen, they're seen, uh, they are seen as being mysterious, but normal men aren't. And these are some hard points to make. These are hard points for ladies to accept, I get it. But one of the things that the ladies are going to have to remember, gentlemen, you may have to remind the ladies, it doesn't matter if I tell them this, but if you tell them, it may sink in. You can make these points without hatred. You can actually make these points not because you hate them, but because you love them enough to listen to the plan to form a community sustained by endogamy that is offline with a physical location. I hope that helps. Thank you all for listening. I'm sorry it took almost 20 minutes. Black heart, black mind, black out, salam alaikum. And now you know why I say black heterosexual non-select male power and black patriarchy, including MLS, until extinction or judgment day. <laughs>